Good afternoon, Night Nation, and welcome to Inside the Lair. It is Friday, February 23rd, and I'm back, baby. Mr. V is in the building. Mr. V is back. Mr. V Victory is here, joined by Max Erickson. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's start with the wrestling. Wrestling tonight, they are going to be wrestling in the individual section uh, wrestling tournament. It'll be the final individual wrestling tournament for these seven seniors. We want to wish the seniors and the rest of the team good luck as they hit the mat tonight and tomorrow, looking to head to the state tournament next week. They hit the uh, mat last weekend and took on the three seed, Dover Yoda Eagles, on Saturday and ended up winning 54-14 to before they took on top seed Chatfield. And the Chatfield Gophers are set up for a deep run this year and in the future years as they have an excellent team. Chatfield beat KW, sadly, 36-20, to ending the team season for the Knights. Things just didn't fall right for KW to take down the Gophers' max, but it was uh, closer than the 36-20 score. Good luck to the wrestlers this weekend. Let's go to boys' basketball, Max. Last Friday, the boys played Triton in their last home game of the regular season. They sadly lost 82-55. Zach Mason and Colton Steberg led the Knights in points both with 17. Yeah, they much. head to Blooming Prairie as their last regular season of the game tonight. Yeah, let's talk about that Triton game quick, Max. Triton jumped out and they pretty much buried the Knights with their shooting. The Knights beat the Cobras 83-81 in their earlier matchup this year, but it was all Cobras. Over 15 three-pointers made for Triton. That hot shooting the Knights could not hold on. Then tonight, big matchup, top six ranked Blooming Prairie looking for revenge as the Knights beat them earlier this year, 73-60. to But the Knights are going to have to compete without two key players, R.J. Hodgman and Ross Aldorfer, who are nursing injuries. And uh, tomorrow, the seedings will come out for the playoffs. Who will the Knights play next week in their first round matchup? We'll find out tomorrow, baby. It's going to be an action-packed weekend. Hi, I'm here with head coach Brent Lurkin. They have one game left in the season against top six ranked BP. What is the game plan coming into tonight's game? Well, when you play against a team like Blooming Prairie, um, you got to start by playing some really good defense. So um, we got to try to protect the paint and not let them get easy baskets inside. That's usually where they're at their best when they're driving the ball to the basket or um, getting offensive rebounds. So we got to shut that down first. And then they do also have some kids that can shoot the ball well. So we got to make sure we get a hand up and contest the shooters. So if we can do that and play good defense, um, hopefully we can attack their zones the way we did last time and get the ball in the middle and get some easy buckets and some open threes. And if we shoot well, we'll have a good chance to beat them. If not, it'll be a tough game. But either way, it'll be a good game to get us ready for playoffs. Well, playoffs are coming up. Uh, what seed do you guys think you could be, and uh, how deep do you think our run could be this year? Well, um, the fun part about this team is they've shown that they have a really high ceiling and, and on the right night we can play with anyone, um, such as that first time we played Blooming Prairie at home and you know beat them by 13 points. So um, I, think, I think we have a chance to beat anyone. Um, Seeding-wise, um, we're looking at probably anywhere from like a 7 seed to a 9 seed. Um, uh, hopefully we can get a top 8 seed because that would give us a home game. Um, but I think there's a good chance we could play Wabashad and Kellogg again um, and we lost to them early in the season, but we're playing a lot better basketball now. But I think we could end up with a rematch against them, so that would be kind of a fun game. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. The Knights girls basketball team earned the number 12 seed in Section 1, and they went down to Harmony, Minnesota to take on the fifth seed, Fillmore Central Falcons, last night. The Knights ended up losing 65-50. to uh, they got down 17 to 2 and just couldn't quite recover. They did get it down to single digits, but too much Falcons in the end. And the five seniors for the Knights played their final game in a Knights uniform. And we want to wish all five of those girls best of luck as they move on with their high school careers. Thanks for everything you've done for the program, ladies. Knights finished with six wins on the season. They'll look to. Uh, um, have some girls step into some key roles as three senior starters will uh, have some open spots for the Knights next year. In other news, the winner play the Adams family is in the final stages before they perform for the public. Luke is caught up with Mr. Hawkinson, the director. I'm Luke and I'm here with uh, Hawkinson and uh, I got a couple questions about the Adams family play. So my first question is, 
is it sort of like the movie? It's the same characters except it. We don't have cousin it, but everyone else is there. They're crazy and they're spooky and they're kooky. Okay. <laughs> so is it like more of a musical or more of a serious play? Oh, it's definitely a musical. Um, there's some spoken conversations during it also, but uh, there's a lot of songs. And the uh, element that's quite a challenge for this for us this year is group dancing. And we're not a bunch of dancers here, so we're really taking a crash course in dancing. Okay. And uh, when, is, when do you plan on uh, showing it here at the school? Yeah, the student performance will be on Friday, March 8th and probably start uh, about 1245. It's, uh, it's a two hour run and uh, we're uh, frantically getting things ready. Got painting and dancing and lights and sound effects and all kinds of stuff to do yet. All right, well, that's all I had. Uh Max, you're a part of that production? Yeah. How are things going here about two or three weeks before the show? Hawk says we are where we're supposed to be, so that's good. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Good. Well, you're looking forward to it, and you will be able to watch The Addams Family March 9th or March 10th. Uh, let's take some time to thank our sponsors for this week. We've got a new product, Max. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. The D-Dog Shoes, baby. Let's watch. Are you an inconsistent hooper that can't make any shots like this kid? Well, look no further, because you can be like Derek Severson and make incredible shots like this. Be like the millions of kids around the world who have Derek's shoes. No way! Derek's shoes! So go pick them up at your local retail store for $75. Severson flips it up! Ah, baby! Alright, thanks guys for putting that together, and thanks to Derek Severson for uh, lending us his shoes. Can Miss Ehlers or Mr. Wibben guess more elements from the periodic table than Mr. Walling? Let's find out. Welcome to the variety segment. We're going to see who can guess 33 elements in 45 seconds. I'm with Miss Ehlers, and she's going to, we're going to see how many elements she can guess in 45 seconds. Ready? Am I supposed to show them or not? No, I'll show them. Oh. Ready? And start. Sulfur. Oh, I don't have no clue. Gold, zinc, oh, I think there's one under here, um, nitrogen, oh, I'm really, um, silver, is boron an element? Silicone. <laughs> Lithium. Oh, I don't remember that one. Arsenic. Yep. Iron. Yeah. Oh, I That's know. time. <laughs> wow, you know your own. I'm here with Wibben, and let's see how many he can guess. Titanium. Magnesium. Iodine. Argon. Sulfur. Phosphorus, lead. Oh, AU, 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 AU. Gold, zinc, bismuth, nitrogen, krypton, aluminum, boron, silicon, lithium. Brilliant. Selenium. Yep. Oh, yeah, I actually got that. Is, that is manganese, I believe. Yep. Ferrous oxide. And that's. What did you say this was? Ferrous oxide. Wrong. Um, but that was time. I'm here with Mr. Walling. So, Walling, you will have 45 seconds to guess 33 elements. Here's the cards. Oh, I'm when, supposed to do this? Yep. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. And go. Titanium, magnesium, iodine, argon, sulfur, phosphorus, lead, gold, zinc, bismuth, nitrogen, krypton, 
aluminum, boron, silicon, lithium, beryllium, selenium, arsenic, magnesium, manganese, iron, zirconium, tantalum, copper, potassium, carbon, yttrium, oxygen, hydrogen, silver, xenon, ruthenium, osmium, and that's the beginning. And that's time. You have completed all 33. Max had 45 seconds, Mr. Walling, the champion, answering 33 elements in 45 seconds. You also participated in that. Yeah. How many were you able to answer? I got 18. 18? Elements. Elements. Correct. So you were short of beating Mr. Walling. Yes, but I was still the second highest correct. You were okay. However, they did not see that because you... Did Hey. We got, well, time restrictions. Did you beat Oliver? Yes. Good. You that's, got 16. That's the whole goal. Yeah. Hey, Gunner this week, he put a segment together called How to Make an Animation with a Software He Found. Take it away there, Gunner. Hi, everybody. It's Gunner with this week's How To. And uh, today, I will be showing you how to animate. So the first thing that you want to do is select your frame rate, which is basically how many of the little pictures that you have to draw to make up a single or second of animation. I personally animate on 12 frames per second, which is also known as animating on twos. Most people animate on ones, which is 24 frames per second, but I like to stick to 12 just because it's a little bit easier. So yeah. <clears throat> so the next thing that, sh that I usually do I really get started is uh, I record my audio first because that way it's a little bit easier to line up the audio and the video. Now I will take a break to record my audio and be right back. Okay, now we got our audio clip. Now it's time to actually get into the down and dirty of animation, the actual drawing portion. So basically what you do is you draw a little picture and then another one right after it where you move it just, just enough. And then once a bunch of those are overlapped, yeah, this is the problem with using free animation software, the ads. Anyway, as I was saying, once those are all overlapped, then you actually start to see some motion and that's how animation works. Now I have a little bit of the animation that I threw together real quick. So again, the way that the animation works is that you draw a bunch of little pictures slightly moving each one to make it look like the image is moving so good demonstration is frames 16 through 18 right here so frame 15 is just the normal bed frame 16 yeah the blank goes up a little bit and so on through 18 and then it drops again usually um you would draw a couple frames you're turning back, but this is the choice. I'll just play a little bit of what I have so far. So, you may have noticed that during the snoring, the bed went up, and then afterward it went right back down again. So, yeah, so that's Animation 101, basically. Thanks for watching. And finally, Owen, who is excited for baseball season, baby. He has some tips and tricks on how you can become a better hitter today. Are you tired of hitting weak ground balls? It's probably because you're rolling your hands. One drill to help this is palm to palm. You have to have one palm facing up and one palm facing down throughout your whole swing. Now transfer it to a baseball bat. That's going to end this week's show. We appreciate everybody watching. And uh, Max, good luck to the Knights who are competing this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.